It all started when a young lad named Testable woke up with one goal in mind. He was going to beat the Blaze Rod Set Seed Glitchless world record that I set over 7 years prior. And it took him a bit of elbow grease, but he eventually managed to replace my ancient 159 with a 157. This started a bit of a competition between us, Quiblington also got involved, and eventually Crafter Dark challenged us to use his strategy of getting blaze rods in peaceful mode. And this is when I realized I had a big opportunity. I could become the first person ever to beat Minecraft 1.2 entirely in peaceful mode. And after some seed finding, routing, and grinding, I eventually pulled off this run. And just like that, I had basically made Minecraft history. I edited it into a pretty decent video and then published it hoping for the best. Oh well, just another mild disappointment. Life goes on. But later, while I was grinding for sub 50 in the sponge game, it came to my attention that a somewhat bigger YouTuber had uploaded a video of himself doing a very similar challenge, which ended up getting a couple more views than mine. In fact, it became the single most popular video on his channel. So what could be responsible for this video's smashing success? Judging by the view counts, this video has to be over a thousand times better than mine, right? Well, let's see for ourselves. What if I told you that peaceful mode is the hardest game mode? This is Minecraft's only difficulty that is deemed impossible to beat without the help of cheats or specific worlds. Nope. Try again. I want to change that. Therefore, I'm giving myself 24 hours to find a way to beat the game, and if the timer runs out, I'll delete my world. Oh no, he has to delete the world that he literally made a day ago. How horrible. This is literally the least intense challenge I can think of. I mean, I'm not a rich man, but at least I can provide a financial incentive for the challenges I come up with. Probably a good time to mention I was talking to my friend right before this. And oh, you actually have one of those? Well, in that case, you could have just made a bet with him and said the loser has to buy the winner pizza or something. At least that would have had actual stakes to it. In order to beat the game, blaze rods are a required step. If we are playing on easy or even hard difficulty, we can just walk into another fortress, find a blaze spawner, and kill a blaze. No problem. Wait a second, I'm confused. Does this method work on normal difficulty too? You didn't specify. After quite a bit of research, I stumbled across this video showcasing a method to obtain blaze rods in peaceful mode. It took you 5 hours just to find this video? Let me give it a try. In order to obtain the blaze rods, I would need to downgrade my world to version 1.0. Bit of a strange choice to not just downgrade to 1.2 instead, but okay, I guess. Now, the dude who made that video, Crafter Dark, he... I don't even know if the video is legit. It could be fake for all I know. There's no reason why this would be fake, but if it's so sus to you, then why not just make a creative world and try it out there? Now, like I said before, I'm only playing on this single world. Safely loading another world isn't an option. Oh, I see. That's a bit of a strange restriction, though, considering you're about to say this. So, I made myself a backup and began the downgrade. Well, your challenge, your rules, I guess. I just need to get down to the mines and get some diamonds. I'm, I'm making myself a nether portal. Something tells me it shouldn't be taking you a whole four hours just to find diamonds on peaceful mode. Unless you're striving to be like Ali A. Takes me 10 hours just to find diamonds. Luckily, I recorded some footage and I was able to reverse engineer where exactly my base was. However, that whole process burnt another valuable hour. First, it takes you five hours to do research, four hours to find diamonds, and now another whole hour just to check your recording and walk a couple hundred blocks? I mean, I get it, you're not a speedrunner, but maybe you need to focus more on the actual game. Whoa, okay, that's... that's a drop. I'm not expecting you to speed bridge or anything, but it's literally been known for over a decade that sneaking diagonally lets you bridge faster. Okay, so just flat out, gonna need the strongest sword. After doing a little bit of research, it seems like the best weapon is a diamond sword sharp as four. And by research, what you meant was moving your eyeballs down to look at the bottom of the screen where the description is. That went on for 20 minutes, and all I have to show for that 
to 24 levels. I honestly thought that the breeding farm was going to be more than enough. Listen very carefully to what I'm about to tell you. Skill issue. You already told us that you were using backups, so why didn't you just make one before you killed the animals? Also, if you were a real gamer, you would have just duplicated the XP instead. Everything that I've worked so hard for is riding on this. If this doesn't work, the entire video is going to be for nothing. You really think Crafter Dark is that much of a prankster, don't you? Okay, I'm gonna put together a little farm like Dark did in his video. Hopefully this will be good enough. Here, let me pull up my auto clicker. So you're not allowed to make a separate world to test this out in creative, but you are allowed to use an auto clicker? Really? You can't just go like this or like this? Come on. Now, even though we have the blaze rods, we still need ender pearls to beat the game. Luckily, we can trade for them with villagers. That sounds like a lot of work. If only there was a way to skip getting the two ingredients and just get the eyes of ender directly. Yeah, that isn't good generation. I will say this does make me a bit worried that the villages could have also gotten corrupted. Yeah, because it's not like Minecraft worlds are infinite or anything. Boys, they said it couldn't be done. They said it was impossible. No, we didn't. And that leaves me with only one thing left to do. Let's go! Wow, I didn't think you'd have the attention span for it, but you proved me wrong. You know, I'm just realizing now this probably makes me the world record holder. Okay, well, it seems that video was not the greatest, but you might be wondering, if it was made a whole year ago, why am I not reacting to it until now? And the answer is that I got distracted, but the real reason is because a year later, another YouTuber made another video that piqued my interest in the topic again. And let's just say that where Chief fell short, this guy fell short too. Peaceful, the only game mode in Minecraft that is deemed impossible to beat, or that is at least what they want you to believe. Good thing we have Shulkercraft here to expose the lamestream media with facts and logic. This video has the same challenge, same strategies, and even the same narrative as Chief's video. But this guy is somehow even worse at the game. See for yourself. I'm instead going with the bucket method to build my portal. And for that, we need to find the village. Now, I would provide my own commentary on this, but Fyro has already made a video about what happens when big YouTubers try to speedrun Minecraft, so I'll just let him do the talking. So, everyone knows that the first step is you always have to look for a village. There are no shipwrecks, there are no monuments, there are no magma ravines. The only way to speedrun is you have to find a village and you have to look for a surface lava pool. We got the iron, let's craft the bucket now, and we can fill it up with water. We have some iron left. No you don't. I saw you get three iron from the golem. Where'd you get the other three? Unfortunately guys, I've killed the iron golem, and I only got three iron ingots, which means I was only able to make a bucket. So in order to light the nether portal, instead of using a reliable strat that doesn't involve having to gather an entire nether ingot and only uses pieces of wood, I have to look for a cave and I have to find an iron ore to smelt the iron and make my flint and steel. Oh, I see now. Shulkercraft must have seen this video and mistaken it for a legitimate guide. So it should be no surprise that he proceeds to run around for a small eternity trying to find a surface lava pool. We could just get lucky and have an already activated portal, but you know the chances of that happening are pretty much close to zero. I will give him some credit here, cause unlike Chief, he actually got the number right. So I did some research. Is it really that hard? Maybe I should have called this video Big YouTubers Suck at Doing Research instead. First, I do need to downgrade my world to version 1.0. Aside from the fact that 1.2 works just fine, why do you have to downgrade in the first place? It's not like you're stuck using the world that you started with like Chief was. There is actually a way you can duplicate the items in this version with a crafting table and a nether portal. Both of you could have just thrown your items on the ground, reloaded the world, picked them up, and then crashed the game. But do whatever works for you, I guess. Here, we need to find a fortress with a blaze spawner. Please, turn 45 degrees already, I'm begging you. Now I will start jumping while also using an auto clicker to click really fast with my sword. Seriously? You're not just gonna do this? 
pathetic. The only thing left is to get the ender pearls, find the village, trade with the cleric villager. His inventory looks suspiciously empty here, but more importantly, why didn't you just duplicate extra stuff to trade with the villagers before upgrading the world? At least Chief had the foresight to do that. Now, at this point, you might be thinking that Shulkercraft stole this video from Chief, but there is actually an important feature of his video that makes it completely different. Because his video is sponsored. This was so easy thanks to Wise Hosting and its version switching feature. Why are you even using a server if this is a single player challenge? Also, you can just switch your Minecraft version in the launcher. It's really not that hard. Anyway, I've decided to save the best for last. Are you ready to see some top notch, sponsor worthy gameplay? Because this epic boss battle will put even the best Minecraft speedrunners to shame. As Curryway likes to say, enjoy the one cycle. First, I had to destroy all the healing crystals with a bow or some snowballs. After that, I waited for the dragon to purge and go into the middle. Using my beds, I did a lot of damage. At first, I thought that my video on the challenge had the superior gameplay, but after watching this incredible end fight, I stand corrected. It appears that the YouTubers we saw today are actually the greatest speedrunners of all time. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay speedy. Peace. Alright, took a while, but I finally got around to finishing that. Oh. Right.